they fit tank, a completely weatherproof time-lapse camera with two panoramic lenses, a built-in solar panel and remote access monitoring and editing. Yes, please. In this video, I'm showing you the Tiki 3 Pro Plus, the latest and greatest time-lapse camera by the French N-Lapse team. This camera was gifted to me as part of a collaboration between N-Lapse and the Ultimate Time-Lapse course, about which you can find more info below this video. So this is the Tiki 3 Pro Plus. It features two 16 megapixel Sony sensors, providing you with a 220 degree field of view with JPEG and DNG captures, a built-in high capacity battery and a solar panel, up to 512 gigabytes of internal storage via micro SD card, remote upload and access of data via Wi-Fi or 4G, IP66 weatherproofing, integrated GPS, smartphone control, and so much more. In this video, I'll be unboxing, installing, shooting, and showing you some of the footage that comes out of the NLAPS Tiki 3 Pro Plus. Let's go. So this is what I got in the mail a couple of weeks ago. I have shot some footage on it, obviously, already for the video that you're watching right now. It comes with this nice carry case. Let's take it out of the box. This carry case has the logo embossed on it. Open it up, little Allen wrench, a little lens cloth, and the quick start guide. This is the camera. It comes in this hard foam, and there you have it. I put the original sticker back on here. So as you can see, two lenses on this corner bit a solar panel that you can open up and swivel. Now that is the unboxing. Obviously you are here for how to shoot with it and what the footage looks like. Before we move on, I forgot to mention they also sent me a larger solar panel. So the top of the camera is the normal size. This is probably about four times the size. Um, I don't really have enough space to mount it on my balcony, so I'm gonna have to see what I do with this, but it's good to know that this is an option as well. Now, before you start using the camera, the guide tells you to charge it up, which we'll be doing, plug in the USB on the back and let it run for up to 48 hours. While we're at it, let's have a look at these ports in the back. They're all weather sealed. This is the external solar panel power point. This is a power button. Of course, the micro USB slot. We have a micro SD slot as well as that SIM card slot and a photo capture button. This is all, as I mentioned, weather sealed and I've I've let this camera sit outside in the rain for weeks on end and it still works, which is of course to be expected of the IP66 rating. The bottom features a standard quarter inch thread hole for tripod plate, which I've used, but you can also mount a different metal bracket on it, which allows you to use this style of ball head, which is great if you want to mount that up on a pole, for example. The top, of course, is the solar panel, which swivels and tilts up, and then you lock that into place with the supplied hex key. Now let's install it and have a look at some of this footage. The most important thing is that you mount the camera as level as possible, otherwise your horizon might be warped. So I'm putting it with this tripod plate on my tripod, or I guess on my ball head on my balcony, and I'm also going to doubly secure it. Even though I'm sure this ball head's not going anywhere, just in case, because it does get a little bit windy up here it has this little secure mounting point so i'm going to add a peak design strap to that which carries a ton of weight just in case so i'm pointing the camera south or southwest ish because currently we're in winter time i want to be capturing the sunrise to the sunset as the seasons change the sun moves wider and wider and we have the sun going higher and higher in the sky which means that it will eventually move out of frame. But for now, the sun, as you can see, still moves entirely within my field of view, which is really fun. And I'm hoping to make some composites of the sun's trajectory as time passes. If you want to stay up to date with those, make sure to follow me on the socials as per usual. So once the camera is mounted and nice and level and pointed in the right direction, angle your solar panel so that it captures the most amount of light. Depending on the season, this could be more flat or a bit more tilted up. It is winter time and the sun is at its lowest, so I'm mounting it almost vertically for now. Now that the camera is installed, let's have a look at the shooting modes and how to use the smartphone app to control the camera. You turn the camera on by long pressing the power button and then you open up your app to connect it via Bluetooth. There are three capture modes, burst, event and long. Burst mode is for shorter term things. Events is for longer term, but still within one day. Long is for seasonal or multi-month or even multi-year time lapses, ideal for 
construction time lapses, for example. Setting each shot up is extremely user friendly. You dial in your settings and then you send that off to the camera and it's locked in and then you enable the shot and it starts shooting. Now, if your camera is within Wi-Fi range or if it has a 4G chip built in, you can actually remotely access your camera and see what it is shooting and you can even change your settings and download footage from it, etc. It's all pretty cool. I was in Belgium recently while the camera was shooting and I was able to look at the sunset in London as it was happening, which if you know me, I'm obsessed with shooting sunsets and sunrises, so that's a super nice feature to have. Once the Tiki has shot enough photos, you can start generating your time-lapse videos via the online software, which by the way is a subscription model. Different price points give you different options. There are truly a ton of different editing styles. You can create portfolios. You can choose to make a time-lapse of just one lens or the other lens or both of the lenses. You can choose sequences just in the daytime, just in the nighttime. It's a really interesting platform. Apparently it uses AI to generate these sequences and I am honestly quite impressed with how many features you get. Too many features to cover in this video so let me know if you want to see more content about this camera on this channel in the future. As I mentioned at the start of this video I will be covering as much as I can about this camera in the ultimate time-lapse course as part of a long-term time-lapse chapter that is coming to the course very soon. I'm gonna leave you with this time-lapse that I shot from the balcony recently. This was honestly just a plug and play setup. I'm super impressed with the quality. The nighttime stuff is good enough. It doesn't do like long exposures. I think it's limited to below a one second in length of exposure, but you can still see the moon moving through the sky and sitting on the horizon. And with the AI editing online, it actually smooths out your flickering, etc. That being said, straight out of camera, there's not a ton of flickering in there. So I'm very, very impressed with this camera. I'm not just saying that because this is a collaboration video. This is a camera that I've wanted for ages and this is the latest model and I'm very grateful for NLabs to send it to me. I'm grateful for you to keep watching this video until the end. Do you have any questions about the camera? Do you want to see stuff with it? Let me know what you think I should shoot. Should I just set it on the balcony and forget it for a couple of months and then come back and see what we shot? Let me know in the comments. If you have any other questions or suggestions, drop it down below. Thanks for being here and may the clouds forever be in your favor. Bye-bye.